Hi! A couple of weeks ago I posted a video where I showed you how I made these awesome Christmas sweater decorations. If you haven't seen that, I would encourage you to do so. You can find the link in the video description. I never if you loved the project, but my wife, she took one look at it and she said, yeah, it's okay, but it's not like you made a dancing Christmas tree. Make a dancing Christmas tree. And then I tried to explain that maybe one Christmas theme project a year would be enough, maybe next year. But no, that wouldn't fly. So. Let me show you how I made it happen. Okay, I need to start somewhere, and I'm thinking I'll cut out the skeleton first. I'll be using thin aluminum for that. It's lightweight, but still more than strong enough for my application. I'll also need something for the trunk, and this 4cm in diameter PVC pipe is just excellent. It's hollow, it will fit all the electronics, and since it's plastic it's easy to work with. But it's not gonna stand by itself, so I need to make a base. And I'm cutting a circle out of a leftover plank from a sandbox I made in one of my earlier videos. Now using a rotary tool, I'm making a shallow groove for the pipe to stand in. Perfect. Next, I'm running my planer over the surface a couple of times to achieve a smoother finish. Which of course immediately looks much nicer. Okay. So the amount of current my electronics will require is more than Qi batteries can handle. So I'll be plugging this thing into the wall. And I'll be borrowing my phone charger for this. It's a micro USB plug, so I bought this breakout board, which will fit snugly in the hole once I'm done here. And you can find a link to one of those and all of the other supplies in the video description. The power wires will need to come out on the other side. So I need to access the hole I made with my drill earlier. And I'm using my rotor tool for this. Finally, some wood stain to achieve a more natural look. Okay, so now I'm ready to make the mechanism to enable dancing. I'm drilling a hole to thread the steel wire through, like so. Next, I'm drilling a hole on the center line of one of the aluminium pieces. It will become a pivot point. To be able to align the holes, I need to make a groove in the pipe. And now the top of the tree has one degree of freedom. I just need to do the same for the other pieces. To avoid splitting the trunk in half, I need to make a couple of holes on each side. They will enable me to put the moving parts in. The motion will be driven by a servo motor, and I want all three of my levels to move. The straightforward solution would be to use one servo motor per each level, but I thought I could do better than that. I thought real long and hard about this, and what I came up with is rubber bands. If I connect top and bottom levels to the driving middle with rubber bands, I will be able to make all three tiers move at once with only a single motor, and without any complicated gear mechanisms. But before I implement this, let's deal with electronics. I went ahead and added a microcontroller and a few resistors on a piece of Vera board, which I'm now trying to solder on. A microcontroller is the brains behind the operation. Not only will it have to drive a servo motor, it will make 18 LEDs flash in different patterns. I've used the code from the Christmas sweater project I mentioned earlier as a starting point, but this time it's a little bit more complicated. I'm asking a single microcontroller to perform two continuous tasks seemingly at the same time, which is not that straightforward. The microcontroller will need to switch between two tasks so fast that it's imperceptible, and effectively will see both LEDs flash and the motor moving at the same time. Anyway, I've now got all the LED wires soldered on, and what a mess it is. Alright, I want to turn the dancing on with a click of a push button. That means it gets soldered on too. And since all the electronics will get stuffed inside the PVC pipe, I don't want to see any exposed metal running the risk of creating shorts. Also, remember the micro USB breakout board? A couple of wires get soldered to it too. And I run them through a hole in the base I made earlier. And the board fits perfectly. A power switch, same drill, a little bit of solder, and some heat shrink. I'm also preparing the connection for the servo motor. There's three wires. The red one is the power, 
white one is a signal, and the last one will be ground. Again, making absolute sure that there's not gonna be a short. Just the LEDs left. Thin the wire, heat, feed the solder, and repeat. Over, and over again. Not forgetting the heat shrink, of course. Looks more like some sort of art than a Christmas tree. I'll need to work on that. But before then, let me show you something. Every time I finish soldering, I run a continuity test to look for shorts, where a beep indicates a short. And now I'm touching ground and supply wires. This shouldn't happen. After some inspection, I found that the ground and supply pin sit straight across on the microcontroller. And the nature of the Vera board is that it runs parallel copper tracks along the entire length, and it's up to the user to break them. When soldering, I reminded myself five times to do that, but in the end, I forgot. If I was to turn the supply on before fixing this problem, the worst case scenario would be that my charger would explode. However, a more likely scenario would be that the charger would just send one amp its rated output around the loop without anything else happening. The LEDs would just not light up. Yeah, but I'm not gonna try and test that. Anyway, let's get back to the wires. It does seem like a mess, and I need to sort it out if I want to fit the electronics inside of the trunk of a Christmas tree. I'm putting the LEDs in the groups of three. Much better. That is two groups, or six LEDs, on each tier of the Christmas tree. Let's see if it all fits. Oh, and just to show you, I made a couple of extra holes. One for the power switch, and one for the push button. Alright, the LEDs on the longest wires go in first, followed by the rest of the LEDs. Each bundle has its own little window it needs to come out through. Once that's done, I can remove the temporary electrical tape, and spread the LEDs around. Now for the fiddly part. I need to push in both switches through their respective holes without breaking any other electrical connections. But it's a tight squeeze, my fingers barely fit, so it takes a lot of trial and error before I get it right. But I get there eventually. And I need to say that this project is all about planning. The length of the wires, the number of LEDs, the size of the pipe, the placement of the holes, the layout of the buttons, and so on. That's how everything did fit snugly inside, and my fingers did have enough space to reach in for those buttons. And here it is. I need to say I'm a little nervous, I'm not sure if everything's intact, I haven't plugged it in yet. Well, now I did, and it's safe for me to glue the trunk to the base. I'm using hot glue for this. I don't need a strong bond, but in case I do mess up afterwards, I can always come back and break the seal without any damage to the parts. And while the glue is setting, I'm using a level to make sure that the tree is upright. I'm also using hot glue to fix the buttons in place. It would suck if I push them too hard and back into the pipe. The motor is also not allowed to move. So hot glue again. Not to forget the micro USB board. I'm putting the nozzle in and pushing plenty of glue. But quick though, I don't want it to set early. Excellent. And with that then, it's time for the branches. The servo motor came with a special attachment. And it can be fixed to the aluminum with a couple of very small bolts. You might also notice there's a couple of larger holes. These are for the rubber bands. And there's a few other holes, but we'll get to those in a minute. Oh, and I added some hot glue on the little nuts just to make sure they never get undone. As for a part, it now simply sleeves onto the little geared wheel on the motor. That's it. Now for the other two. And as I showed you earlier, I need to suspend them on a wire. But what I didn't show you is that the steel wire needs to be long enough, as it will form part of the frame of the Christmas tree. And now the moment of truth. We'll see if the practice proves the theory. 
I mean, if I actually can get away with using just rubber bands. And... I couldn't expect anything better. Mind that the responsiveness is a function of the tension of the rubber bands, which just means that you get better movement when the bands are more tensed. Something else to think about is that the motor I'm using is not terribly strong, so I need to opt for strong yet very lightweight materials. And steel wire is one of such examples. Here, I'm using it for the frame. Remember the little holes I mentioned earlier? I'm pushing the wire through, trying to make concentric circles. For the supports on the sides, I'm using the tails of the wire I had already pushed through the PVC pipe. I'm trying to make three circles on each level. And it's shaping up nicely. For now, I'm just hooking two ends together. Not bad, but the circles can move somewhat, and I don't want that, so I'm adding a spot of hot glue on each joint. And with that done, I can start putting the LEDs in place. So I'm simply zigzagging some thread around the frame, tying the LEDs where I want them to end up. The thread also serves another function. It lays foundation for the next layer, which is green felt. And I bought plenty of this stuff to cover the entire Christmas tree. I need to cut it down to the little strips first though. Something like this. But it's much easier than I thought. I got my wife to do it. Now I just need to hot glue them to the frame in this kind of fashion. But let me do this off camera for the dramatic effect. Let's plug it in. And this thing is freaking gorgeous. I couldn't be more pleased from top to bottom. Perfect proportions, nice shade of green, and lovely decorations, the LEDs. I'm just amazed how wonderful it turned out. And it dances. Well, to be honest, I expected a little more movement from top and bottom sections. But the weight and the tension from the LED wires proved to be too much. I should have doubled up the rubber bands. Well, there's no going back now. But nevertheless, though a little noisy, this project is undoubtedly a success. So if you loved it as much as I did, well, it's a big ask. But if you did enjoy it, leave a like, check my other stuff, consider subscribing, and thanks for watching. Have a lovely Christmas.